Hi friends, today we are going to study practically how you are going to find out the properties between plane polarized light that is called as the properties between PPL. This is a, one of the topic from the microscopic mineralogies. Whenever you are going to see the mineral under the microscope, these are the basic properties are there. We have to identify on the basis of the plane polarized light that we are going to see today and in the next consequent we are going to see the properties between cross nickel. So before going to the uh, topic just we will have a discussion on the pathological microscope because the normally you have been handled the biological microscope now this is the first time you are going to handle a uh, pathological microscope so we have to see what are the additions are there in that particular uh, microscope and how you're going to handle it out very carefully. So that will be there. So we'll go for the first the microscope now. You can see here, I have kept this important points which are there. They have been highlighted here. So this is what we have the pathological, simple pathological microscope. This is the base of the pathological microscope that is called as foot. And now about this one, we have a mirror and this mirror contain convex and concave. So we are always using the Concave, uh, convex and you are going to adjust the light such that the maximum light should be axis the optic this is what called as the optic axis from that optics axis the maximum light has to be transferred whatever the sunlight which is incident it has to be reflected back and we have make a such a position of that microscope that and the mirror so the light maximum should be transmitted from the optic axis so that is the basic use of the mirror and about this one we have a small tube is there and this tube contain on the lower side is the lower prism a nickel prism is there now why we call it as a lower because on this this is the main area where we have kept the slide that is called as the rotating stage on that rotating stage a uh, 360 degrees has been graduated in the center there will be a groove the slide will be kept and on the other side two clips are there we uh, stage clips which are there we put this uh, step clip and fix up the middle exactly below the crosswire which we want to study the properties and this one we have the polarizer which is there that we called as on the lower prism and this polarizer what is the quality of the polarizer the light which is entering in the polarizer it is an ordinary light which is vibrating in the different direction but once it is coming out from the polarizer, the polarizer work as it will be transmit the light maximum in single plane. A light will be vibrating in a single plane. The light will come out in the maximum as a single plane light. But there is still 10% light is there which is vibrating in the different direction. So for this one, above the polarizer, we have a condenser. Above this polarizer, we kept a condenser. And what is the use of the condenser? Condenser will be used to filter the 10% of light which is vibrating in the different direction so that the light once come out from the condenser, 100% light will be vibrating in a single plane. And that's why called as the properties between plane polarized light. And most of the microscope, the polarizer is already fixed. In some microscope which are there, it will be uh, in and out has been given, but most of them we have been fixed up. So that is what we have, the lower prism or it is called as the polarizer. And above this one, we have the rotating stages there on which the grooves will be given and the slide will be there. On that slide, we have two sides, we have the clip is there. So rotating stage and this side we have a vernier scale, a small 0 to 10 graduated scale will be there. This will be useful in finding out the interfacial angle in the cross nickel when you are going to study the properties in between the cross nickel at that time we require the vernier scale and there will be a screw will be given so no need to type the screw just hold your two fingers below the vernier scale and with the thumb you have to rotate whenever you want to rotate you can see that your arm should be away from that rotating stage you should not touch there are the two screws are there below the rotating stage these are the centering screws and if you touch them slide then what is happening whichever the mineral we want to study it will be off center to make that centering unnecessarily 5 10 minutes will be goes out and that will be 10, 15 20 students are there in the practical it is become difficult each one is doing the same mistake then it is 
we could not study more minerals we just hardly one or two minerals we can study so there are six uh, seven microscope we are kept on the uh, five six microscope will be came at a time and everywhere one uh, instructor could not go and uh, make it out that particular uh, mistake rectifier so these are carefully we have to take the precaution when you go under the microscope when you are going to rotate just hold the vernier scale these two on um, fingers on the lower and upper side thumb and this should be on the other side so it should be away from that particular screws so that precaution we have to take that particular stage when you are going to rotate the stage about this one we have a uh, object now normally how much enlargement which we are going to make out on the basis of that we select 5x 10x 15x 25x or 45x whichever uh, how much enlargement we can make out so that will be we are going to make out for that and about this we have a slot is given there is a slot is there in that slot a, uh, accessory plate we can introduce but this will be not there in the fy it will be there in the ty bsc but this is a basic one the slot will be given so that slot in that we are going to put the waste plate whether it may be a quartz or it may be gypsum or it may be mica to find out the sign of elongation the mineral sign we have to find out whether the mineral positive negative uniaxial or biaxial so these are the the advanced uh, practicals are there so in the basic we don't require but the this slot which is there this will be kept for this particular uh, find out this particular uh, practicals about this stage we have here is the important one upper prism this is called as the upper prism and here we called it is as a analyzer it is called as analyzer above the rotating stage whichever the prism is present it is called as analyzer and above this analyzer again one prism is there and that is called as bertand lens we are not going to use in the fy but in the sy and ty we are going to use this bertand lens in finding out the sign of elongation then uh, you, uh, uh, that will be the finding uniaxial or biaxial so that figure we are going to make out so at that time it is required or uh, otherwise we don't require so it should be always out whenever you go see that under the microscope that the, uh, the analyzer is should be out as well as the button lens should be out this is the first simple observation we have to go once you go into the microscope see that on that particular waste plate it is written in is written here out is written so you have to put whenever you put hold the tube with your two finger and just press it out with the thumb or just with this put out the face so from the left and right in and out we can make out with this two fingers that face so that our uh, path of the light should not be divert or the position of the micro microscope should not be shifted out and above this to analyzer we have directly a ips is there so we can going to see the mineral over there so this is what we have the parts which are there in this particular uh, optic axis and in addition to this one here we have one screw that will be adjustment of the condenser yes the height of the condenser we can adjust similarly here we have one screw is there so that is will called as a joint and with that joint what we are going to make out we can make the slanting position or vertical position whichever the comfortable position is we have to make this one so that will be angle will be given with this then here hold the arm whenever you are going to hold it out here we have the fine adjustment screw is there here we have the coarse adjustment screw is there fine adjustment because everyone is having its own eyesight so they have to adjust the fine microscope but once the teacher or instructor has finalized the adjustment everywhere you have to make out the fine adjustment if you don't find any doubt is there immediately you have to ask your instructor that you could not see any property so that will be there so this is the fine adjustment this is the coarse adjustment so this is what we have the practical so here what we are required this is the mirror the polarizer condenser then here we have the object then here we have slot then analyzer then bertrand lens and the ips in addition coarse adjustment screw fine adjustment screw and this is the adjustment screw for the condenser similarly on the right hand side the same thing is given and we are giving you the separate details which are now will not been given this is a mirror this is a polarizer condenser rotating stage then we have the objectives the slot is given analyzer and the bertrand lens 
and the IPS. So this is a systematic simple way which has been shown. Then here we have handle is there, force adjustment screw, fine adjustment screw, whichever the required, the detail has been given. Still we'll see one more uh, uh, figure which will be showing you the path of the light. So here you can see how the work will be there. Light is there, which is come uh, here we have the, what we are going to have, the condenser. This is the polarizer. This is the rotating stage. The lenses will be there, analyzer, but what line lens, and this will be the comes out the I project. The I this will be the next one. We'll see now the first simple property that is built a title as properties between plane polarized light. Whenever you the, there will be in the spotting, maybe one, maybe two, maybe three, or maybe four slides are there. So in that you have to write the spot. Train number is there. You have to just write the train number. And you have to start observing the property and write down the observation. First, see under the, once you go into the microscope, first the thing what we have to see that analyzer should be out, but time lens should be out. Once this will be there, then the first simple property which you are going to see in the IPS is the color. The color as usual, what we are going to see in the megascopic and similar one you are going to see in the microscopic also. Here we have two groups. One is colored one and second one is colorless. So minerals has been broadly divided into two categories based on the colorless and color one. Those which are colorless are there in that we have quartz, calcite, plagioclase, orthoclase, microclean. Uh, micro These are the colorless minerals. So mineral, we can't see anything color. Just write down the mineral is, color is colorless. But those minerals have the color light green dark yellow, dark brown, or pinkish one. So you have to write that particular color. For example, Biodad shows yellow color. On blend shows the green one. So these are the simple example. Here we are giving you the three slides which have been shown now. Here we can have the biotite. See here also the biotite is there. You can see now here green color. So variation is there in the color. So this is the iron one, you can see the dark one. So these are the patches which are there. So color you can easily distinguish. Come to the next one, form. Form is again an important property of a mineral by which this will also become a diagnostic property of some minerals. So like what we have in a megascopic, we have the form are the basic one, three qualities, uh, three type or four types are there, but out of this three are the main types. What is the main types? One is crystallized where faces, edges, corners are present. Then it is called as crystallized one. The second one is crystalline. Faces, edges, corners are absent. That is imperfect crystal. Then it is the crystalline one. Then the third one is the middle is in the form of traces. It is called as the crypto crystalline. So these are the three one. And the fourth one is there amorphous. Mineral is not crystallize in this category but only the natural glass is there so that is the fourth type that is the what we have is the amorphous one so crystallize crystalline crypto crystalline so only you have to see similar one under the microscope when you are going to study the thin section we are going to see the three main types of forms in that the first one u hydral crystal subhydral crystal and unhydral crystal U means all. When all edges are present, edges, corners are present, it is called as u -hydal, like a cube or hexagonal or six-sided forms where edges are present and corners are present. So when you are going to get six-sided Q form or uh, eight-sided form, these are called as u -hydal, ideal crystal, u -hydal forms, whereas only the side faces are present and upper one as well as lower side, no edges are there. Then this will be called as sub -edal. half. Sub means half, hedal means faces. Half faces are present, then it is called as sub form. And whereas none of the sharp edges present, no edge is there, edge is not there, then it is called as un form. That is a rounded or irregular form, which has come under this category. Whereas in the sub we have latch shape, Plate form and elongated form. These three are there. So clear this one. So here we have u hydal crystal, then sub hydal crystal and un hydal crystal. Come to this one. In u hydal, we are going to get six-sided form or 
eight-sided form. So simply we call them as six-sided or eight-sided. Or if you don't want to write this one, just write down new adult. Enough. Examiner is understood that you know that particular thing. But especially each middle has his own habit. So we have to write the simple basic one, six-sided one or eight-sided form. So simple, the form is six-sided or eight-sided form. Whereas in the subtitle, what is happening? Depending upon width and the length, we have three forms. What is that? If the width is more and whatever the height is there, height will be a little bit more in than the compared to the width, then it is called as the platy form or flaky form. But now what is happening? Width has reduced, length is remain as it is. But what is happening? Width is reduced, that is the latch shape form. Still, length uh, width is reduced length is increased then it is the elongated one when the width is more but height is a little bit more yes width is more now in this then platy or flaky but it is reduced latch a form still reduced it is elongated but at the uh, sub uh, at this stage latch shape as well as elongated length is go on increasing then only we call them as latch shape or elongated form and whereas in unidal, one is a rounded one and second one is irregular. A rounded one, we are going to get the orthoclase or quartz, whereas irregular one, we have the garnet. These are the typical example. Irregular one is the garnet, rounded one is a quartz, whereas latch shape is the plagioclase one. Flaky or foliated is the biotite is there, best one. And in the transverse section of hornblende, six-sided, transverse section of agite is eight-sided, then LS of horn blend is elongated. So these are the, then um, uh, what we have, the tourmaline is also elongated one. Then uh, actinolite, trimolite is also elongated one. Then kyanite is also elongated one. So these are the form which are there. So we have to basically remember the three, u idle, sub idle, un -idle. If you don't want to remember, remember irregular, regular in the category of un -idle. Then platy, flaky or uh, Plaky or flaty, latch shape, elongated, that is in the sub idle, then six sided, eight sided, it will be there in the u idle forms. Now we'll see the diagrams. And see in this, both upper one, both these two are the ideal one, u idle forms. Yes. Count them, this is the eight sided one. You can see this is the four. What we have the elongated one, yes, this is what we have the square one, elongated one, latch shape, it is not been stretched, it is may become the smaller one, yes, latch shape form, it is a rounded, irregular one, you can see now, zigzag, so these are the forms. Come to the next one is the relief. The appearance of the mineral in plain polarized light. How you're going to see the outline, the boundaries of the mineral, whether the mineral which is mounted below the cross wire can easily distinguish from the surrounding mineral because there may be minerals, more minerals are there, but now whatever the mineral we have been concentrating, whether that mineral can easily distinguish from the surrounding in a plain polarized light. So that we called as the relief, the Appearance of mineral in reflected light, that is the borders, boundaries, cleavages are very clear or unclear. We have to see that and that will be the relief. So in that low, medium and high relief. When, say example, there are the 100 boys are there and in that one girl is there. So what is happening? You could not identify a girl. Yes. So that is the what we call as a low relief. There are 100 boys. But out of this, now there will be 30 girls. You can easily identify the girls are there and out of the 100 if there is the 80 other girls very prominent one so this is the way you're going to get the prominence appearance of that particular object so here what we have we have to concentrate now here as for the middle if the outline of the middle is not visible the middle is not clearly visible and we could not distinguish from the surrounding middle then the role relief but when it is now clearly distinguished from the surrounding, then it is a moderate one, but it is a very prominent one. It is the high relief. We will see now. Plagioclase, orthoclase, all colorless minerals which are there, right from cores, orthoclase, plagioclase, calcite, they will have the low relief, whereas the hornblende and the color one, they are the moderate one. 
and whereas the garnet it is a very high relief you see now here the picture is given low and high one side on the left hand side i have given you this is the diagram of the mineral below the cross but you can find out very faint outline is there so that is the low and see the mineral here under the microscope like you can find out you could not easily distinguish outline of that particular mineral so it is a low relief but here on the right hand side you can see below the microscope the outline of the mineral is a very prominent one it is a high relief you can see here in this it is a very prominent one so low and high now next one we'll see the scale from low to high how it has been taken place yes on the upper side we are given you the slide you can see now outline which is could not recognize so we have been showing you in this preference so it is a low relief but it is the moderate one but you can see now as you go towards this side it is become the outline is go on prominent and prominent so it is a high relief clear now this concept is clear so relief is concept i think is clear now so there should not be any doubt next one is a cleavage cleavage is a plane of weaknesses along which the mineral can be split with the smooth surface this is a definition we have seen in the uh, megascopic mineral similar but here it is not definition but now what is under the microscope we are observe there is a straight parallel line a set of parallel line they may be a long one or they may be short one but all are parallel together so this way we called as a cleavage if there is all cleavages all lines vertical lines are parallel together it is a one set or middle may show you one set or there is a another set maybe making angle of 90 degree or 120 degree so there is a second set so there will be cross and there will maybe a third one and there is a no cleavage so one set of cleavage two set of cleavage and three sets of cleavage but what is happening when you take a section one cleavage will become parallel together so in a microscope we are going to see only one set or two set of cleavage or cleavage is absent as you can see now the horn blend basically if you take a horn blend middle a long elongated horn blend and parallel to the length you have cut this middle and you have made the slide of this middle elongated one so when you take the ls of the horn blend it will show elongated form and parallel to length we have one set of cleavage but if we have the elongated one but you have taken the transverse section in that transverse section it shows you six sided forms show you two sets of cleavages making an angle of 120 degree so horn blend shows you two sets of cleavages and making an angle of 120 degree whereas if you take the transverse section of agai there is also a two sets of cleavages but now angle is 90 degree so that is easy to remember now whenever you going to have across these two slides you can see very carefully observe on the now you going to identify and agai so in the theory in the ty normally where we have distinguish between the kylo clino pyroxenes with the ortho pyroxenes so in that it will be these two are the representative minerals are there so it will be required and the calcite will show you the three set but here it will be only we are going to say the two sets you yes, see in this diagram now is yes, the first one slide you can see now the shortest as well as longest will all are parallel together this is a one set is yes, very clear one in another one it is there but now here in the center we want to focus which is a very clear one similar one you can see this side it is clear very one set is perfect and now you can see here it is the parallel to the length one set is there and this is the another one so here we don't have any set of cleavage so color here cleavage is absent there we have two set and about one one we have the one set of cleavage here we have this is the what we have the augite which shows you six side forms and cleavages are two sets is yes, making angle of the 120 degree next property is a crack crack is the irregular line in the wall also you can find out there are the cracks irregular line they are intersecting with each other so this is we normally called as crack crack is also become the important diagnostic property for some minerals like olivine garnet or tourmaline these 
three are the very prominent one in which we can easily distinguish the what we have the cracks are with the help, help of the cracks we can find out the identification of the mineral so in the case of tourmaline what is happening the this is the length of the tourmaline and perpendicular to this we have the cracks yes perpendicular to this we have the cracks are there this is called as a transfer cracks so this is the diagnostic property of the tourmaline whereas in case of the olivine a polygonal shape is there and from the uh, periphery towards the center the irregular cracks comes and they are intersecting so this is called as the radial cracks yes here we have shape is polygonal and here we have a big polygonal shape is there and the cracks which are there in the widening so the transfer cracks and radiating cracks these are two and third one is irregular cracks where we have the garnet is the best example where all cracks are intersecting so here we have first one transfer crack that is the tourmaline is there and what we have the next one is the radial crack olivine is the best example and the third one is the garnet is there that is the irregular cracks next one is the twinkling this is also a important diagnostic property for the calcite mineral so calcite mineral will be recognized on this particular basis also so what is this it is a change of relief of a mineral it is the change of relief of a mineral in plane polarized when you rotate the stage what is happening there is a change in the relief within the mineral and due to this we are going to see a rainbow color bands and these rainbow color bands will appear and disappear throughout the 360 degree when your the stage will be rotated and especially the calcite mineral will be showing you this like example when the in the night if you look to the sky you are going to see the stars yes there will be stars are winking yes so what is happening here the same thing here as you rotate the stage whatever the rainbow color bands are there they appear and disappear so this will be look like as a blinking like a star so that is called as a twinkling the property and it is only shown by the calcite mineral yes you can see now these are the two slides which i have been showing you yes here we have the rainbow color bands as you rotate they go on they appear and disappear yes the last important property is the pleochroism that is the seventh property the what is the pleochroism when you rotate the stage throughout the 360 degrees we have to observe the color whether the color of the mineral is going to change or it will remain same for example colorless mineral as you rotate they remain as a colorless so these minerals are called as non pleochroic and the phenomena is called as non pleochroism whereas some colored minerals all not there will be some colored minerals which are there if you rotate through 360 degrees they will show you change in their color they may be from light to dark maybe light to dark yellow light to dark green light to dark brown so these changes will be there or from one color to the other yellow to green green to pink so like this there is a variation is there in the color so these changes which are taken place in a mineral these minerals are called as pleochroic minerals and the property is called as like we this will be asked as separately the pleochroism similarly the twinkling and twinning this will be asked in the distinguish between the twinning and twinkling this is the property is there so the pleochroism also asked separately for four or five marks in the theory but still it is there in the practical you have to be see whatever the slide is there you have to see in that so pleochroism is the change of color of a mineral when the stage is rotated through 360 degrees in plain polarized light especially the colored mineral like a garnet as you rotate the color will light pink is there it is remain light pink no change is no intensity has been changed so this mineral is called as non pleochroic colored one is there but it is non pleochroic rest one colorless minerals are all are non pleochroic yes here we are given mineral showing this property is called as pleochroic and there will be a quantitative or qualitative what is a quantitative that is from one dark color to the light color change is there within a one color yes there is a change in one color for example we are taken as a green 1% to 
there is a change in the intensity of the color is when you are going to make your home painting at that time the painter always checks that whatever the shade he has prepared whether earlier one is given it is a remain or same yes once it is finished again he has to make prepare so that time is always checked because the percentage has to be proper if it is not there then the variation will be going to see in two different wall or within the one wall we will find out the variation is there because we are not taken the proper percentage so if it is within the shades is there within a one color then it is called as quantitative pleochroism and from one color to the another color if it is there change is there then it is called as qualitative color qualitative pleochroism that is there i have shown you this definitions quantitative biotype shades of green color or oh, sorry shades of yellow color whereas on blend shows the shades of green color yes and qualitative hypersthin this is the best example which is green to pink it will be changes there and the color like a garnet middle could not show any change it is a non pleochroic okay see here this purposely i put this slide now because you i don't have the microscope here which, I, which you can easily recognize but uh, as as in the practical you have been visualizing now so here we are giving as the stage will be rotated we'll find out see lighter one as you become little bit dark little bit dark little bit dark so within this rotation color intensity has been increased within the shade of one color so this is what we have quantitative quantitative say here we have only 5% of green 10% 15% 30% green so that is the quantitative pleochroism but here you can see on your left hand side what is happening here from one color there is a change is there into the another color so it is a qualitative pleochroism it is called as a qualitative pleochroism now here again a uh, mineral is there as you rotate the stage you will find out there is a change in within the one color it is the quantitative yes again uh, one quantitative one i hope i made the concept clear what we have seen the seven properties the first one color second one relief third one cleavage crack twinkly yes color relief cleavage crack then what is there on the twinkling property number 6 and number 7 is the pleochroism so seven within this order we have to write down color relief cleavage crack twinkling and pleochroism these are the properties which are very very important one is there we have to and before going to the practical if we have this video with you you can just one or two times you can make it out it will become easy and uh, you will be score good marks or you will be get a good confidence and i hope you see this my video thank you very much to watch my video have a nice day thank you